This is why I walked away from chemical engineering after four years of studies at university. Assalamu alaikum, my name is Hudayfa and welcome to my channel where I'll be talking about tech, career, engineering and more broadly life. This is the kind of video that I would have wanted to have watched when I was first thinking about studying engineering at university. I'll share why I chose chemical engineering, what it was like, what went wrong and a little bit about what I'm doing now. So I'd say there's three reasons why people study engineering. The first is prestige. It's a prestigious career path to consider. The second is money. You get told that it's well paid when you're first looking into it. And the third reason is opportunities overseas. You get told that there is a shortage of good engineers around the world and that this is one of the most secure career paths you can consider when you're in college. I was good at maths and chemistry and I was fortunate to spend a few days of summer school at the University of Manchester, kind of exploring different options and engineering was one of them. And I would say that's more than most people get to do at 16. So that gave me an insight into what studying was like and if it was the right path for me. I actually ended up taking a gap year to really make sure that the course that I was committing to for the next three to four years was 100% for me. One of the first things that I did when I was in my gap year was I went onto the university's website and I clicked on the course list from accounting all the way down to zoology, looking at the courses and kind of researching a little bit about what a career post that course would be. And once again, I found myself drawn to engineering. Part of me wonders if that attraction to engineering was kind of predetermined by having ethnic parents. I'd say there's sort of three career paths that are pre-approved. The first is medicine, the second is law, the third is engineering. Anything else that you want to study apart from these three courses almost requires explanation for why you've deviated from, from studying that. So after finding out that chemical engineers had some of the highest starting salaries for engineering graduates, I decided that this was the course for me. So the reality of studying chemical engineering at a top university is that it's one of the hardest engineering degrees. The breadth and depth of the modules that you study and as well as the short time period that you have to complete everything is what makes it really challenging. So your typical week is full of labs, coursework, projects and problem sets. You'll be pretty sure after the first semester if it's for you. Obviously the job is not a reflection of the degree but most people after one semester they realise this isn't for me and they end up switching to other courses. I thought the course layout and structure at my university didn't really leave too much room for exploring outside of that. It felt like the intensity of the course was high for not much benefit gained and it didn't leave room for exploring outside interest areas like other courses did. And it especially felt like it didn't leave that much time to prepare for that job application process, which to be honest is kind of its own beast. And the way I saw it and a lot of my friends saw it is you kind of had to treat it as a module. If you just spent your time focusing on your studies, you would be very underprepared for the job application process. There isn't really anything that you even learn at university that prepares you for the job application process, whether that's for actual engineering work or if you wanted to apply to other fields. So why do people leave engineering? I'd say it's money or the lack of job availability and location. You get told, especially when you're applying to university at these open days and possibly even in high school and college, that there's a shortage of engineers around the world, especially in the UK, and that effectively you'll be snapped up as soon as you graduate. But the reality is it couldn't be further from the truth. I would say there's a shortage of engineering jobs in the UK for each graduating year. And one thing that isn't really mentioned often is that other disciplines can apply to a lot of engineering roles. So it's not only limited to say chemical engineers for certain roles. A lot of companies are happy to take engineering graduates across multiple disciplines. So you're not only competing with peers in your discipline, but also outside of that. And in addition to that, you're also competing with people that haven't secured jobs postgraduates. The second reason is salary. Funnily enough, this is the reason why people join engineering in the first place. But the reality is if you were to take someone that went to a top university and studied engineering and they were to apply their efforts in other fields like consulting or even financial services, you would find that at similar levels of experience, they would get paid a lot more in those industries compared to engineering. The reality is in the UK, engineers are not that well paid 
especially if you compare them to their peers in the US. Now, specifically for chemical engineering, I would say job location or geographical inflexibility is something that you don't actually think about before you start, but is something to seriously consider. Because a lot of the times, the jobs that are available are going to be on plants that are in remote locations. And they're not necessarily going to be in major cities like London or Birmingham or Manchester. It's a huge downside that I don't really feel like is mentioned or discussed. And a lot of the times what ends up happening is people end up having to commute fairly long distances to be able to live in major cities. So if you're someone that enjoys living in big cities, then this is something to really consider. I'm not saying it's impossible to get chemical engineering jobs in cities. After working at ExxonMobil, I decided that a career in chemical engineering wasn't for me and I made the switch to tech. I'll talk more about that in future videos, inshallah. So stick around. If you've clicked on this video, you're likely in one of three categories, either a student thinking about studying engineering, you're already studying it, or you've graduated. If you're in the first category, I hope this video, inshallah, has given you a few things to think about. And one thing I would advise you to do is to speak to actual engineers about some of these points in particular salary. A lot of the times, hardworking students kind of face the reality that actually engineers don't get paid that well. And so they kind of then start scrambling into getting into other careers. That's definitely one thing that I saw towards the end of my degree. After one year or two years in, a lot of students realized, okay, this isn't for me. So then they start exploring other careers and that's okay, but it's important to kind of know these things up front that Engineering might not be the end goal, especially if your passion isn't even in engineering and money is a big motivator for you. The second category is if you're already studying it. If you are, you should probably get back to studying and click off this video. I'm only joking. It's okay to switch. If you are first or second year, one thing that I would advise you to do is to consider exploring other industries, especially through summer internships. I know you probably already know this by now. Getting an internship is one of the best ways to break into a new industry, and more importantly, to find out if it isn't for you and to get some experience onto your CV. And the third, if you've already graduated, let me know if you agree or disagree down in the comments below. Inshallah, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.